not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Welcome to Not Your Average Tabletop. I'm Zach. And I'm Pepper. And today we're back with another episode of Take My Money, where we look at some current crowdfunding projects going on relating to board games. And this week we've got a lot of projects, um, so we probably will not have this next week. We're just trying to get all a bunch of them talked about. So some we'll probably talk about a little bit more than others. Some might just be kind of a quick quick little thoughts, what we think of it, if it looks exciting to us or not. Uh, but yeah. otherwise, let us know in the comments below what you're currently backing, what you're excited about, if there's any games upcoming that you're looking forward to and can't wait. Um, yeah, otherwise yeah. we can get right into it here yeah. with Panda Royale. Panda Royale, which um, initially I just immediately was like, oh, just another cute uh, game. I thought maybe it'd be something like Exploding Kittens or something like that. Seems like there's a lot of cute games. That was my initial impressions. Um, then I saw it was from Last Night Games, which uh, we actually have been sent a few games by them in the past that we've done reviews on. Go check out those videos. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually enjoyed every one of their games that we've played, so then that immediately bumped my interest significantly. Right. I, I would agree, because yeah, right away it, it sounds like, oh yeah, it might be just one of those games which which can be good yeah. but some of them tend to have like mechanisms in them that prolong the game yeah. typically where it's like oh you can get rid of an opponent like you're trying to get to something and then you get rid of an opponent's thing and it just kind of prolongs the game because you always are attacking the person in first place and it just kind of ends up with everyone almost ready to win and just whoever kind of yeah. gets it first but no this one uh, definitely when you looked at it i saw the dice and i was like oh boy I'm in, because I really like to roll dice, and it looks like there are a lot of them in here. A and lot of dice. And I believe it's 100 dice. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm so not it's... sure. That might be more dice in the game than any of the other games we have. I, I guess I, Champions I... of Midgard with the expansions has quite a few, but I still yeah, don't I think still, it's 100. I still think this has it, be has it beat. Yeah, so... It's definitely a lot of dice. Uh, and then we got kind of the different types of dice as well, so it's not just all D6s. 106 custom colored dice. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and then it's kind of, it's a bit of a roll and write sort of, I mean, it is. Um, you're rolling kind of the different colors, and they each kind of um, do a little bit different things, depending on, yeah, what you roll and what they are. Um, I think there's some that can steal dice, which... Uh, is probably the one that I, the only one that yeah. I'm like not the biggest fan of, but yeah, the rest yeah. of them sounded cool enough, interesting enough. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. At least you do replace that stolen one with that one that you gave true. them, so it's they're not going to be at a dice disadvantage, like just the amount of dice wise, and mm -hmm. they would be able to steal as well in the next round, which I think there's ten rounds, and um, just on paper, it's like. I believe you, whoever rolls the highest would win, but yeah, I I did like all the unique types of dice. Like the red ones have uh, black and white printing for the different results on the sides of the dice, and the black ones would be negative, and the white ones would be positive, and then once you figure out your score there, you multiply it by the Number. amount of red dice that you have, so it could possibly be a massive positive score or possibly negative score and right um just things like that just unique twists to each dice take something just simple like roll dice and compare the sums which mm -hmm. honestly i could have fun with just that it just to uh, kill some time but to add a little bit to each die um mm -hmm. i thought it was pretty cool yeah I, I agree um yeah just giving them those slightly unique things so it seems like it's going to be a quicker somewhat quicker game you're going to be kind of drafting dice i do find that a little bit interesting because you're like pulling some out of this bag of dice uh to kind of draft amongst players but i feel like with the different types of dice yeah. you're, in the bag they're going to obviously feel yeah, different i feel like so d20 I don't know. is definitely going to feel different than a d8 so you just have to be able to like just get yourself go. to blindly yeah. kind of do it and not really think about it but yeah, yeah. i guess i've I, I don't play RPGs and stuff, so I'm guessing if, you know, people have those bigger, you know, dice ba bags of all their dice and stuff, maybe I, I've never really pulled oh, dice out yeah. like that, so maybe it is easy. Just grab a handful yeah. and it doesn't really, maybe you can't really tell that easily, so. Yeah, that's possible. Um, 
and they have a <coughs> a couple different pledge levels. You can get the base mm -hmm. version with all those dice, score sheets, some pencils, uh, some bags, two screen printed bags. I'm not sure why two, um, but I was going to say no to a little panda bag. <laughs> right. Um, panda token, and that one will be about 40 bucks uh, mm -hmm. for that, which, um, like I said, 106 dice, which... There's a lot of dice. Yeah. I mean, it does just have plain numbers on there, but custom colors, like I said, and as well for some of the icon, or not icons, but like different coloring on the dice as well. Um, <laughs> so they are slightly custom, but not like custom shapes or anything. Right. So just... Not as nice as they can be, but still. At the same nice. time. Nicer something, than just something special plain, versus just like plain yeah, dice with dice. You, know, you got different ones, G six, D ten, D twenty or something, yeah. but all the same color or something. They luckily have them all all yeah. different in those multiple ways. Yep. And then you can go deluxe uh, for sixty five bucks, which includes two uh, faux leather dice trays and a dozen premium jet black soft lead pencils in a chipboard display case. Hopefully those pencils are really nice. I haven't, I don't know of having experience with them. Maybe I've used some at some point, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know if I that'd make a big difference to me for just writing down a score, but All right. Yeah, I, it's, it's nice to have the storage at least, but mm -hmm. Um, I do like dice trays, and these mm -hmm. look similar. I obviously don't know where they're getting these produced or how good they'll be, but the ones that we have are very useful and very nice. So, um, if I think that would probably be a good thing because everyone's going to be right, rolling their dice, their and if it's what two to like ten players, mm -hmm. having all those in just out on the table, it could be a mess. Right. Um, yeah. And so, if yeah. you want one for every player, you can get the. <laughs> Uh, you get all what is it called the Panda Royal Party Package, which has ten of those dice trays, um, and that's going to be about a hundred bucks. Right, so it's getting a little bit spendy for a pretty overall simple dice rolling game, but uh, yeah, you can definitely have your own, you know, dice trays and stuff. But um, I, I think I, I would think the best option here unless you really do like those trays probably just the base <laughs> yeah. i would think for me yeah. um especially since we do have trays already right um, yeah if you've already um, got something like that i don't know that you necessarily i don't think these are any different than those other ones so i think if yeah. you had something you already used for rolling your dice yeah um i don't know that you'd need that but yeah, for that's sure. another ten dollars of shipping yeah. so it's not too bad for like you said it's over 100 dice yeah i guess i, I don't know what dice costs so <laughs> If I was going to go out and buy a, a ton of dice, I don't, it probably, I would assume that'd be... Probably be around there, I would think. Maybe? I yeah. guess I don't know. Let uh -huh. us know in the comments below if you buy a lot of dice, yeah. if, if this seems crazy or something, but yeah. Yeah. I guess it seems like good value. Yeah, going for April 2024, um, so I would think they could hit that, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think they um, probably, I don't, it doesn't sound like they're, like, still... In oh, the design yeah, no. developing stages necessarily, yeah. so, so they should have everything kind of ready once they know how many to print. They kind of just will send that off, I'm assuming, and get it going. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that is funded. I don't know if we mentioned it. It's oh, yeah. uh, 9,800 of a 3,000 goal and 132 backers. Still got two weeks to go, so you got some time to, to look into it a little bit. Yeah. Or do you have any time? Or is time running out? In the Four, Four Horsemen, Horsemen. Apocalyptic, apocalyptic co op, co -op game. game. <laughs> Prepare for the final stand against evil in this epic deck upgrading. I feel like there's a few that mention like deck upgrading. I'm like, why, why, why is this phrase a thing now? <laughs> and resource management game for one to four legendary heroes. Well, Ooh. that wouldn't include me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know He's that like, I'm a I'm legendary. <laughs> But that's at 58,000, yeah. doing decent, pretty well, um, actually. And then 406 backers with three days ago. So this one you yes. kind of have to look at a little sooner. Um, but, yeah, this one I just seemed like it might have some interesting things in it. But I don't know that I was 100% sold on what exactly was going on, I think, in comparison mm, yeah. to kind of some of the other ones we'll be looking at. 
Um, but that, yeah, it, it could be interesting. It it just uh, like the, the those cards looked to me yeah. a little complicated, but I don't know that they actually so are. It looks like one, two, three, four. Not sure exactly. It looks like this event track kind of has a one, two, three, four. So I'm guessing based on what spot this event is in, and maybe they kind of slide throughout the game, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and maybe they get more and more powerful. But yeah, that is a lot of iconography. Um, I can't tell if there's like the same ones but different colors. I don't think so. <laughs> so hopefully it's pretty easy once you get to know it. Right. But, which it's the same with a lot of games. You that's go into true. pretty much any game in our collection and just show it to someone new to it. They'd be like, oh, that's, I don't know what's Complex. going on. Mm -hmm. um, but once you do get to know it. Um, yeah, it looks like you have all your legendary heroes that will have kind of unique abilities. And you can choose... Um, different scenarios i think and baddies to battle which will also have unique things i assume i could be wrong we looked at 13 projects i could be mixing some things up <laughs> um but this one gave me feelings a little bit of cthulhu death may die as oh, kind yeah. of all the horsemen are moving along their tracks to eventually uh showing up similar to how cthulhu does and obviously you're all controlling right. unique characters and um doing various things to prevent that mm -hmm. all right yeah, and it sounds like you're spending, you have to spend like some of your cards to do things, oh, and yep. um, so you have to get rid of some, so you're having to replace them with other cards and stuff. Um, yeah, it sounds like it could it could be good, could be interesting. Um, cause I do really like Cthulhu Death May Die, and like you said, it seemed like there might be a little bit, a little bit of that maybe. But um, Just looking at this D4, as a D4 ever, <clears throat> I guess it must be what's on the ground versus usually it's at the top. In the little point is how I see it. But this right. looks like whatever's sitting on the ground, which could be a better way to do it. I've just never seen one like that. That's interesting. The most interesting <laughs> yeah, thing so far is that D4. Wow. <laughs> but mm. yeah, I don't think the. I they think it says not, they're not actually painted. All minis arrive uh -huh. unpainted, um, but it does give you a look at what they could be if you did paint them. Um, and this is Deluxe Pledge. So the base pledge would have. Uh, not sure standees i assume or maybe yeah i would think or maybe I would nothing think so <laughs> i would think so or else see maybe an nothing. equivalent eight villains to what's pledge yeah i'm not sure exactly what that would have and then they're dual layered which yeah, is nice yeah and then you got a bunch of expansions. Want your Norse heroes and <laughs> villains. I will say a lot of this. I mean, I think this pulled me in a little bit more as I started going to this. But this is all expansion content. Um, so yeah, then you could it, just skip over the original game content and <laughs> treat this as the base game. <laughs> so then oh, there it Sun is. Wukong, Sun Wukong, one of his favorite unmatched characters to play. Here we go. So that that kind of pulled me pulled me back in a little bit when I saw that, but. Still, and then, I was out the door. <laughs> and that's when I, uh, I mean, I think then we kept going, and that's when I realized all of this kind of stuff is just kind of additional things you can pay. Uh, again, I saw those, those looked pretty cool. Um, but they were just kind of additional yeah. expansion content. Um, and then it started getting uh, so, yeah. a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Base pledge, so it looks like they are kind of sandy. Standies. Um, yeah, but you do get the artwork and the standies. Yep. So I could see. At least a lot those of, don't come unpainted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just print them yourself. Unprinted <laughs> sandies. Um, but I could see. There was a time where I was like, before we really had many miniatures in games, where I was like, ah, it's just gray or whatever. What's so great about that? But once I got some, then I fell in love. But I could mm -hmm. see some preferring standees with yeah. that artwork versus unpainted. Um, especially with the price difference, bumping it up another 60 to 70 bucks, up to 139 mm -hmm. And then if you want to get those expansions in a non-deluxe version, so still standy, but with those expansions, that will be 180 bucks. Mm -hmm. And if you want the deluxe expansions all in, um, 266 bucks. Yeah, so it start, starts getting up there a little bit. Uh -huh. um, that's, that's just kind of a tough thing for me, because those kind of seem like the most interesting characters, unfortunately, to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, then even if I didn't do the sand or did the sandies, it's still 180 at that yeah. point. And um, I'm glad that the the base is um, 60. I mean, it seems more affordable. 
at sixty six yeah. in comparison. Because yeah, sometimes a pretty good price. Sometimes it seems like, oh, we'll do the base pledge at like, you know, in this case maybe like a hundred, hundred ten dollars, and then it's like, well, I'm gonna upgrade to the deluxe pe- pledge at that point because it's only forty more dollars. But this, there's a good spread, so it does feel like it is um, is gonna be something where uh, you can feel decent about it. Although there's what thirty four backers on the base pledge. Deluxe it's like 41 on Deluxe, 41. 39, 154. So wow. a majority of the people, well, They're I guess maybe old. not a majority, but the highest pledged one is for the all-in, yeah, 266. Apocalypse. So Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, oh. I'm hoping for them. Uh, well, for all these people, I'm hoping it's a really good game, yeah, and yeah. hopefully it'll deliver no, on No, we time. hope it's a terrible game. We want everyone to be <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> if we're not buying it, it better be bad. <laughs> Um, but yeah, August 2024, it's a pretty big project, but that's almost yeah. a year away, hopefully. Hopefully yeah. they can get at that. Yeah, it kind of probably yeah. just depends how, you know, if it's all fully finished or not already. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then here we've just got another kind of a quick one. We don't know too, well, I guess I don't really know too much about the Endangered Game. I do game. not know much either. Uh, so this is Endangered American Red Wolf scenario and Endangered Rescue, which is, they've made about 20,000 and it's got four days to go. Uh, 632 backers. Um, so this is, I think, if you've played the Endangered game, just kind of an additional kind of scenario, promo scenario uh, that you can buy. And then it's like a the other one's like a what? <laughs> like an escape 18 room? 18-card escape room type thing. Which where sounded you can rescue some sort penguins, of interesting, but yeah, at the that... same time I was like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I like any escape room style game, so I... I'd be probably more interested in that just because I mm-hmm. don't know Endangered and I do know Escape Rooms, mm-hmm. so I'm actually pretty interested in that, but I'd yeah. probably try Endangered or look more into it because if I was going to get one, I'd probably want to just like bundle it together. Like If I was back right. in this, I'd probably bundle it together because I think that's a pretty good price, 30 bucks, which I Saving guess... two dollars, probably. Yeah, so you save two dollars. You have to get it. You lose money if you don't. <laughs> um, Essentially. Which, I guess, is this standalone at all? Or not? I don't believe it's Okay, so you wouldn't need an expansion. the base game. I don't know for sure, but I'm assuming it is not. Because um, in the video, even, I think they only talked about oh, yeah. the it, base it game. Yep, yep. So, and kind of a little bit of how that was played. So, it sounds interesting. Um, I think probably at the time I looked at this in Danger, the initial game, uh, is back when we didn't really have any cooperative games. Oh, yep. So... That's kind of changed a little bit, so maybe that would be one I should go revisit again to see um, if it seems like a game for us or not, or yeah. if it seems too punishing. Sometimes cooperative games can seem a little bit too punishing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments below if you've played Endangered and uh, what you think of it. Because, yeah, I'm guessing if you like Endangered, here's just some more some more you stuff. Can go get, you can get you all can, the other you stuff. Can get, uh, you can get it if you're brand new to it. It looks interesting. Um <laughs> All those yeah, expansions. You can get everything. Get Noah's Ark like. pledge. Get everything out there. Yeah. Ooh, the peacemakers. The horrors of, of war. war. <laughs> and this is from what Snowdale Designs. Uh, Seventy-eight thousand euros. About a week left. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is. Um, I don't know if it's like a re-implementation sort of of their it Dawn is. of Peacemakers. It sounds like it kind of is, because they were talking about how feedback has kind of influenced kind of this to be, sounded like kind of an ultimate version of that game, definitive, right. upgraded in a way, mm-hmm. um, to where I'm under the impression, because I don't think you can add on uh, Dawn yeah. of Peacemakers here, right. I'm under the impression that you'd be good with just this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, yeah the, the production looks really awesome. Uh, I recently got um, Lands of Galzir that also came came from them, and that production value on that one was pretty solid. The artwork was great, and this is really giving me a lot of the same kind of vibes with the artwork and stuff. So um, I'm guessing the production value on this one will yeah, be pretty yeah. solid. Um, the game found so it's a little bit different here. We got 65 euros, which I think was about 70 US mm, dollars. Yep, yep. So, so that is all... so the, the game with a promo pack and sleeves, or just the game and the promo pack for 55 euros. Right, which or, is probably what we'd get. We yeah, I would typically I would get so. into sleeves, but 
Yeah, uh, so, but if you want the all-in gameplay, but it'll get Lands of Galzir, it's a good game. Gale of Merchants, some expansions for that as well. That'll be about 220 euros. Um, even if <laughs> get you want out there. all that, and some and sleeves, and some deluxe stuff. things, and some more dice trays to add in addition to your 10 dice trays from the Panda <laughs> Royale. <laughs> You're going to have about 20 dice trays after all you buy all this. That was, what, 400 euros? So that's mm-hmm. eh, it's really getting up there quite a ways. Yeah, but. so it looks like you get a custom insert. And I really love that whenever they can hint to you where things go, it looks oh, like it's yeah. printed on the box here, kind of what goes in the different areas, which I believe these are just kind of the different factions. Um, yeah. So good. that's they're equal in size for each of these slots it seems so it's not a big deal that it labels it but i like that it does right um and yeah in this game you're kind of not really fighting as a faction against other factions you are working to bring peace and get them to end the war you do not want one to forfeit or the other or one to completely wipe out the other Mm -hmm. trying to get them to make a deal and bring peace which it could play kind of just like other games, if you're doing the opposite. it's kind of like Last Will, where it's like, oh, you go spend all your money. It's like, you could just be gaining money in a way. It's just right. victory points one way or another. <laughs> right. Um, so maybe it kind of plays like that, but I like the theme. I think mm-hmm. it's something unique and mm-hmm. intriguing for me. It's like a, f- a friendly version of Root. Yes. <laughs> it does have that feel of root, I would it, say. With all these different characters, screen printed meeples and stuff, it, it does make me think of root or Everdell, I guess, too, a little bit. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Just with the different animal factions. Or, well, mm-hmm. in Everdell, it's not really animal factions, but yeah. if you've got the collector's edition, you can choose from like 20 different <laughs> animal types. That is true. That is true. Not overwhelming at all. <laughs> um,. But yeah, it's, I, I like a fold-out book for mm-hmm. different scenarios. Um, they say there's six scenarios, I believe, but they say they're replayable, highly replayable. Everyone always says highly replayable scenarios. Yeah, it's sometimes with, hard to tell. With only six, I would, be, I would be tempted to take their word at that because that's not that many. I believe it said six for this one. Um, I could be wrong on that. Check it for yourself. But um, <laughs> hopefully they are and... Mm-hmm. It looks like pretty simple. This has given me thoughts of deck builders like Clank, where you'll play the different cards and they'll give you um, possibly, not sure exactly how this works, but maybe action points of that type to use. Mm -hmm. Um, So it hopefully is a pretty approachable game Mm -hmm. um, because I'm actually pretty interested in this. I like the artwork throughout. Like I said, I like the theme and the components look great. Um, So I'm pretty interested in this one. I was interested in what you would think of it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely interested in this one. I really like the look of the worlds they've created. Mm, like, yeah. even the Dale of Merchants, I think I've looked at that a couple times, and I don't remember what led me away from it. There must have been, it must have either been player count or something, some negative interaction or something. I don't know what it was. Or maybe I'm just remembering totally wrong. Mm, but there yeah. was some reason I didn't end up getting it, but I've, I've loved the look of all these worlds, and, yeah, this one sounds like it'll probably be pretty solid. Um, so it is not worlds; it is one world. Zach. That's true. Dimeria. This world, Dimeria. one world. Just different times. Different times. Um, we got all those awards. Pretty um, good awards. This is going for shipping. Okay, it's shipping. If you go, just the base games, gonna be average shipping, I would mm-hmm. think. Um, yeah, a little, so. little more. If it is, if you do go that all in, but you're already paying a lot more, I'm sure that. That won't hurt you. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess what was the timeline on this? I always struggle going from site to site over to GameFound. Game found. Okay, over here, looking for July 2024. So, about a, a little under a year out. Yeah, yeah, and they've released a lot of games. They know what they're doing, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't disappoint us. Another one that knows what they're doing. Yes. 11,000 backers. One five. Wow, I did not realize it was this much. 1.3 million. It is... Terraforming Mars is still a hot, hot obviously. Stuff. Uh, it's got a week to go yet, so it still could continue climbing. It might... Could hit that 10 know, million get, mark. Okay, I don't know about that, but could get to 1.5, Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I think it yeah, will. Yeah, that's... 
That's doing really well for uh, <laughs> once you kind of go down and see what is in there. But I guess there's some things that are a little bit more expensive as well. Um, but yeah, kind of the, the main, the big thing here is a Prelude 2 expansion, which yes. I think if uh, you ask most people that play a lot of Terraforming Mars what their favorite expansion is to that, if they have a favorite. They would say it's not even an expansion. It would say, should just be in the game. I think that's what they, <laughs> so a lot of them do probably say is Prelude. Um, so they're coming yeah. out with kind of a second one of that that kind of gives a lot of the same things as the first one. Um, kind of just more additional content to that. Um, so I, I thought it was kind of weird and <laughs> when it was uh, first talked about, oh, Prelude 2. Uh, Prelude it like, It's like, hmm, yeah, I felt like, and you were asking, I don't, I don't know if we actually looked. Um, when did Prelude, the original one, come out? I did not <laughs> Cause, look. Because it feels <laughs> like, I don't know, when they came out with their big box in yeah. the last couple of years or whatever, it kind of felt like, oh, this is, you know, kind of done with Terraforming yep. Mars probably, no, or, we or got close. more. And now it's like, no, we actually have some more stuff yeah. here. Um, it does, especially since Prelude 2, it looks like it just adds more of the same stuff mm -hmm. instead of like an additional thing that you don't even know about right. to start with. It's just more of the stuff. So that feels like that should have been. And I kind of assume that there probably was more Prelude things added within each expansion. Kind of like additional yeah, starting know. things or maybe promos. I'm not sure. I just assumed because it was so popular, but this does feel like a few years later than it should have been released. Um, right. Just because it's so popular and everyone, I haven't heard anyone dislike that. They're trying to get that cash money. Get that cash money. Um, and then but, you got milestones and yeah. awards. This yeah. sounds pretty interesting. I feel like this also feels like it's too, well, not too late, but this feels late too. It's too late. Um, it just, <laughs> this seems like something that maybe should have come and maybe... Yeah, if you've played a lot of Terra Mars, really the main expansion I've played with is Prelude. So um, I don't know, maybe some of the other ones have things like this. I think there is a board that has different objectives and oh, stuff that yep. you're doing, but I don't think it actually has like tokens. Oh, no. Maybe I, I might be remembering that wrong. It might have tokens, but um, yeah, I feel like this is something they could have easily done. Yeah, I mean, that just seems it, like a long time ago. One of the first things you could think of to change up the game from game to game. And like mm -hmm. you said, maybe there are things and expansions that kind of do that but mm -hmm. um, that's another thing where i'm like that's like the first thing like when we play tapestry it kind of has those three objectives and like one of the first things all everyone was talking about was like oh get more objectives get and these I'm in surprisingly here. they never did add more they never did i don't know why yeah that's interesting um but yeah i think i feel like it'd be the same thing here like you could just mix up the game and change it up like what you're going for uh, mm -hmm. every game and I, I think that would add quite a bit and they must think so, too, because they are doing it. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like 35 milestones, 35 awards, so that's quite a few. That is quite a bit. Um, ho I wonder <clears throat> if some of them are specific to certain like expansions or maps. That's true, I'm not sure. Um, hopefully not. <laughs> right. And then an Automa solo expansion. Um, which, Which, if you like solo play... Could you not you play, play it like, solo before? What's I think there not? was a solo, but this must just be yeah. more, I don't know. Maybe just... <laughs> It must be a little more structured one. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Maybe. Um, David Turks, he's, he does all these freaking solo modes. He does a lot of solo modes. I haven't paid attention to which ones I've played that are his or not, so I have no clue if I like his stuff, but a lot of people do, and... I guess you got your definitive solo mode for terraforming Mars. And then the other big thing here. Neoprene mat packs. With. Yes, with a, an attractive storage box. Yes. <laughs> yes, so these are the Mars base blueprint. So I think it's the base game map. And then did you say there was another kind of map that was double-sided? Yeah, I think there's one expansion that had two maps. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think it had double sides, so I'm assuming that's what these three are. Yep. And then they've got four new ones. Four new ones. And all these the neoprene. Expansions. And I think the one comes with more things. It must have more ocean spaces or something. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So it comes with some additional tiles there, I, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah. um, I was confused right away because I see these and I'm like, that doesn't look like the board. But and I realized, hey, that's Mars in the middle there. So that's the main board. 
And then there's room to put all the tokens, everything you'd ever need from these expansions. And I realize how massive this neoprene mat must be. I haven't actually, I don't know if it says the size of them. I am not and sure. I have not measured that to our table, but those are probably pretty big. Um, but they look nice uh, mm -hmm. from the kind of zoomed out view that we have here. Um, I don't know what I think, like, if we're not playing with all the expansions, if all this space with slots for things would bug me or not. Just having that empty every game. Mm -hmm. um, it could maybe a little bit just be like, ah, I wish that was just not there and we could just have the artwork instead. But um, it is nice to have that built in if you do play with those. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So I don't, <clears throat> I guess I don't know. I didn't look if they said if whether or not that fits in their box, but I'm assuming they do not. Yeah. Because so like you said, I think they're going to be pretty large, so yeah. you're going to have to so. have a place to store all of these. Well, that's what the attractive, yeah, the attractive boxes, boxes you have one for each of them. <laughs> and you got some things unlocked there, and then you got all these pledge levels of mixing and matching the different things you can want, or that you'd want, and mm -hmm. it's kind of just got them all individually listed below, so you can kind of just a la carte whatever you yeah. are wanting. Um, yeah, there's just there's a lot of options you can get here. All the way up to, let's see, is that the highest? 228 bucks. And you don't even get the base game. <laughs> you don't game. <laughs> even get the base game. <laughs> but you get all the new stuff. All the new stuff and some 3D tiles as well there. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe some domes as well for there, which yeah. we got to get those domes, Zach. we got to get think, those domes. And yeah, those oh. are available as an add-on. So, yeah, just pick whatever you want here. Mm -hmm. So it comes with the dome. Where are we? There we go, the dome. So this is, are you going <laughs> to surprise us and say you have backed this I, for the $15 I have, dome? I have not backed this one. Um, but, yeah, I might have I might have to, uh, just to get just to get those alone. Just, just I'm sure, get them. I'm sure that will be the best thing to do. But, yeah, I might, I might have to go back and look at some of these yeah. uh, different items and what they've got here. But... And then you've got a huge shipping chart um, mm -hmm, from all, mm -hmm. depending on what you're getting, it's going to vary wildly, I think. Yeah, if you're um, going to the highest one, that's going to be like 325 bucks. Or if you're just getting the um, base a Prelude 2, 12 bucks. Uh, well, those are a different. Yeah, those are different. Different colors. regions. <laughs> I'm picking and choosing. <laughs> you are picking and choosing. <laughs> just to be fair, it is yeah, only so about 48 the top is bucks. 50, almost 50 bucks in the U.S. Um, but if you are around the world, it, it is can be pretty smitty. And Oh, and if you want the additional copies of an entire pledge, um, <laughs> even more. Oh, boy. My goodness. Wow. Five, oh, wow. That is some expensive shipping for the rest of the world there. So, yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, going for July 2024, I would think that, I mean, it's Stronghold Games. They should be able to do that. Yeah. Hey, I, I guess I don't know. Did their dice... Terraform Mars dice deliver yet? Is uh, that on time? I'm not sure. I, I think, think I just started seeing started, that deliver, started, but yeah. I'm not sure if that if this was when it was expected or if that's delayed. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I could look, but then I'd run. But yeah, they're getting it. they're getting into their getting that's, some more money. That's a lot of backers. That is for, a lot of backers for like something that's not. A you can't even get old, the base game. It's a pretty this. old game. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's was it 2017? 2016. I think it's the same Something year like size. That. Yeah. Um, and they both like they, they still feel like they're very popular games. Yeah. So like, this might be something to look at. I know. Yeah. Wow. Jamie's made the legendary box. He said he's not going to make anything else, but this, this just shows you go back. You go to that back. Cash cow. You get. People are some, probably going to support it. You're getting some milk. You're getting some milk. <laughs> People are probably going to support it. Yeah. Yeah. And, then and another them. cash cow. No, another. <laughs> maybe not as big as Terraforming Mars or Side, but it is ranked pretty highly on Board Game Geek. Uh, Barrage, and this is New Lands. So this one's. It looks like it's mainly new maps. So if you've played a lot of Barrage and really like the game, I'm not sure if uh, some of the. I think there's already been some expansions yep. for this one. I don't know if they've already added some new maps, probably. Um, but this one just kind of adds some additional ones. Um, um, yeah, it's got 4,000 backers, which is pretty is, good. Um, it's only, I mean, that makes the 122,000. That is pretty Like 122,000 doesn't at first seem that impressive, but then you look, yeah, it's 4,000 people, which that's yeah. that's a lot of people. That is a lot of people. It's about yeah. two weeks to go. Um, but yeah, I've, 
I've played this one one time on Board Game Arena, and I've wanted to. I've really wanted to go back and play it, and I've wanted to see. I wanted to play it with you just to see what your thoughts are. I don't know. Uh, there's a little bit of potential nastiness in the game. Um, oh yeah. Uh, a little bit of take that in a way, but I. I felt like it worked at least in that one play I played. Maybe if I played it more, I'd be like, ah, oh, no, this is just this is too much. Um, How many but, players did you play at? That's what I'm trying to remember, because in my head I feel like it was two, but maybe someone, if, you, if you're watching at this point, someone in the comments, if you've played Barrage, if you play it two, is there a like AI opponent? Because I almost feel like there was maybe, there's either a third player, or maybe there was like some AI thing oh, doing something. Yeah. That could be. Or that maybe I was be. playing against AI, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was at the max player no, count, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was either two or three. Yeah, this um, does add a specific board for two. expansion that is only for two players. So um, I, that just made me wonder if, like you said, maybe you do have to add in that AI character or if it just doesn't work at w as well with the base game or mm -hmm. those base maps, um, add a two-player count. But yeah, um, I, it is nice to have them make one special for that. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree, because, yeah, I... It's been a little bit since I've played it, but I think it did seem like maybe wasn't able to do, or it didn't feel like the board was being completely utilized oh, by the yeah. number of players, so it might have been like two or three, so yeah, maybe having a smaller board would prevent that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think if I played it a lot and I actually owned a physical copy, this would probably be something that I'd be interested coins. in, especially the dual board. Dual board oh yeah yeah but. yeah I'm, i've been slightly interested i don't know much about how it plays but mm -hmm. um like you said i'll i'll have to play it um and we'll see maybe we'll have to come back here and late late pledge this one i assume there'll be Might a late pledge to. option um but yeah you can go and or you can maybe on. get it in a future <laughs> campaign it looks like yes because they've got pretty much all their stuff add on everything from these yeah little promos not base games of all of these games mm -hmm. um, but you can get the base game of golem here um yeah that's they got a lot of games they got a lot of games wow. they do uh -oh. i guess when was this delivering uh, how much were these this was delivering may 2024 so not too not too far away mm -hmm. um and yeah 15 looks like 15 pounds for that one or 15 euros oh, for that yeah. one um Fifteen. Yeah, so yeah, that twenty four. So I mean it's not it's not, it's not bad. too bad for that. Yeah, I guess if you were jumping in from here and adding on the base game, that would be sixty three euros right. for that. So yeah, about a hundred bucks getting up to that point. Yep. So which seems like that would probably get you a good bit of gameplay, so Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know that I see Barrage that often on I don't know if I've seen it on any like the miniature market or game nerds or any of those websites i don't know if they just if i've just not noticed it maybe it is on there but yeah, um, yeah. or if maybe they don't sell it to that so um, maybe that is you know a pretty solid price yeah but, oh boy now we got uh lumberjack games which is made eighteen thousand, uh 284 backers about a little under two weeks to go so this one's doing pretty well for what when you first look at what's going on here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> not uh, not quite the look of Barrage that we just looked at. <laughs> what? But, um, Are you telling me this pretty is close. a Barrage expansion? <laughs> it might be. We'll have to find out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is this looks like a, a few different games, and some of them look kind of interesting. But yeah. then at the same time, I was like, Ooh, I don't know that. This is necessarily something. I look at all those custom dice. Those. I do like the. I do like really the look nice of those looking. dice. I do like those the look really of nice. them. Um, yeah, a little push your luck dice game. Mm -hmm. um, rolling them, trying to hit certain amounts. It seemed to cut down trees and get points, um, but also get those flapjacks. Um, <laughs> it just seemed like a really quick type of game. Mm -hmm. Fun, but probably not. A gamer game, I guess. Right. Um, but probably pretty fun if that is what you're looking for. Then right. I would think if you're interested in that type of theme, then that would probably be the type of game that you would enjoy. Yeah. Although um, I am interested in that type of theme, and 
And yeah, I probably would enjoy it. Um, lumberjacks with rocket launchers. <laughs> was... Which need a min minimum of three players. Yep. So that's already a tough sell for our group. We could probably find three, and I don't yep. think this would necessarily be one we'd be like, oh, we're taking this one out all the time. Yeah. But, yeah. yes. Uh, <laughs> the first yeah. thing you read on this one just made me laugh. I, <laughs> play I don't a, know why. Play a rocket. Aim it at a well-armed logger sitting to your left. <laughs> wow. Or the devious bugger arrayed to your right. <laughs> I mean that. I'm guessing that just paints the picture for the gameplay of this game. Mm -hmm. and if you want crazy fun and just getting into the theme and the characters yeah. of this, I think you'd probably have a good time. I, I don't know. I didn't look at it that closely, but this reminds me more of the uh, exploding oh, kitten, yeah. unstable unicorn, that type of game. That yeah, one does, probably, probably because you are kind of aiming at certain people and taking them out of the game. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that probably is a little more like that. Uh, but I do really like the artwork in this one. A um, yeah, little bit that I see. Not too like, bad. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, and then a Squatch and Seek game, which is a stretch goal. I don't believe. I don't know. Looks like it has not been hit yet. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that would be. I'm not sure exactly how this played. You're. It's kind of a memory game, and you want mm -hmm. to get. You're making stacks somehow. Looks like. You fell trees and hide Sasquatches, and then you are taking cards from there, and you don't want to get Sasquatches, apparently. Right. Um, so that's another, sounds like a very simple game. Um, mm -hmm. Not sure how that would work. Didn't completely get a perfect grasp of the game, but... Mm -hmm. So I, it could be hit or miss, I think. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Doesn't seem as, like, wild and fun and bombastic as the rest of them, um, mm -hmm. so hopefully the gameplay is um, good. All right. But yeah, I, I would say... Oh, and I did like those <clears throat> dice. Those dice, I don't know why they got to me, but... Um, these base dice? Oh. Or the... these deluxe <laughs> dice with the little pancakes <laughs> in flap the jacks. centers. The flapjacks. <laughs> I'd seen dice kind of like this, where they have little yeah, yeah. ducks or I've something seen in them, before, and I'm like, oh, but... they're really cool, and... Some reason um, the flapjacks. Got flapjacks me. in there? Oh boy. Um, but yeah, you can get, you can deluxify this to a few different levels. You can get these, um, like I said, flapjack dice um, <laughs> in a little wood case, it looks like. Nice dice tray. Get more dice trays. You need more dice trays. Um, <laughs> or a collector's edition uh, with a magnet clothes box. My goodness. Felt line dice tray integrated in the box lid. Ooh. Um, so yeah. This is going to be your group's favorite game of all time. <laughs> you can go all in. Um, or you can just get the dice, which he might be tempted by. <laughs> um, so That's uh, true. What are the levels? So about 12, 24 for basic flapjacks. <laughs> Deluxe flapjacks. So if you're playing rockets, an RPG lumberjack <laughs> that needs some flapjacks, this, this, these might be the dice Those you need. Those are the dice for you. Um, oh, boy. Hundred bucks for the collector flapjacks. <laughs> oh wow. Well. Um. But yeah. Oh, and they had the bacon for their unlocking of stretch goals. Not just money, bacon. Um. Yeah, it's it's a crazy game. Shipping. I think yeah. Like, you you um, know if it's for yeah. you or not. Yep. I think. Um. But yeah. I. And my ex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is one that I would probably back on yeah. this, but maybe if I saw it, you know, one of these and, I don't know, like a Barnes & Noble or Target at some point in the future or something, maybe would get, um, maybe the first one, I think. Yeah. The one that yeah. sounded most interesting to me, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Just... And then we've got the Colossal Cat in the Box, which something I sort of saw at a Gen Con. Uh, that they were bringing this to life, uh, and I was kind of like thinking to myself, hmm, is that needed? <laughs> is that needed? <laughs> well, apparently, at least about 2,500 people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. think that it is. And still 12 days to go. 12 days oh, ago. Oh, my goodness. Got, made 173,000. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pretty popular trick-taking game, I would say, and I think that is well-deserved. I do yeah. like Cat in the Box. I would say bit. it's my favorite trick-taking game. Okay. I did not know you liked it that much, but maybe 
I don't know how much you like trick-taking games in general. So. Pretty sure I said it's my favorite trick-taking game when we reviewed the game. You probably Vegas, did. And he's completely forgotten. Well, I didn't know if you had played some more trick-taking yeah, games yeah. and thought this was trash. It's my, trash favorite, now. it's my favorite mechanism, you know. Um, but this is four times bigger and better. I, I guess yes. bigger means better. It has to mean it. Uh, two new expansions. Two new expansions. And a big old cat. That you, that you can add on. You can add on. You can add on multiple sizes of cat. <laughs> and, you also, and you also get this cat um, to show who's uh, leading the, first plan, leading the leading trick. trick. Um, which I've always thought when we were playing that it definitely needed. Need a toy cat. Um, I love these tricks. I do like those. Those are amazing. Um, I guess... Is there any version that has those for us? It wouldn't fit in the box. It wouldn't fit in the box. Yeah, I don't think it would. We need the ticket to ride sized box to be able to get these <laughs> to fit pets. all this in here in the first place. Oh my god, this is just weird because I've played the game and I see this giant board. <laughs> this feels it's oh. it it's like they just sent it to the factory and made an error and they're like, oh, we got. These I guess huge we're gonna boards. go with this now. That is, it's just so weird, having okay. played only the small version. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's a great trick-taking game, and I... Oh, my God. Yeah. It's it just, just, it just pretty much makes uh, everything... Like everything's a little bit bigger in Texas. Um, <laughs> they should have called it the Texas edition. <laughs> they should have. Uh, but yeah, then they got a couple of expansions. They got the string theory and the Doppler effect. Um, so it just kind of changes up the, the string theory. One seems to... Seem like it changes up kind of the end game, or not end game, but the scoring oh, in yep. the rounds. <laughs> um, and then the Doppler effect kind of gives you a little bit more variety of you could use a, you know, a five or six mm. red yep. uh, in a certain spot, or you know, two different numbers pretty much. So it kind of kind of changes that up a little bit, um, which seems interesting. I think that yeah. one seemed a little <laughs> bit more interesting to me than the other. Yeah, but because I... I would say. Okay, I think that's my least favorite part of Cat in the Box is the scoring, connecting. Yeah. It just doesn't doesn't always seem to work. But maybe me. this makes it better. Because <laughs> it seems it like it every easier. every time that I have gotten a big chunk of them together, I did not. You've meet, done poorly otherwise. I did yeah. not meet the goal that I needed to. Um, yeah. So I don't know, and then maybe that's just bad play. Could be bad play. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I I'm just it's like. It feels so good to get all those together. Yeah. But I didn't do this, and yeah. if I, I don't know. I think the scoring seemed seems a little wonky sometimes on this one. Yeah. But yeah. I do really love how you're trying. <laughs> like I love the puzzle of trying to make sure that I don't cause a paradox. Oh, I think that's yep. my favorite yep. part of the whole game. Yeah. So if he the scoring survives, is kind of just he's fine. added on yeah. to me. It feels added on. I don't know why. Um, but yeah. Look at those larger cards. Larger card numbers, numbers uh, <laughs> which I was hoping that they'd like four times the size <laughs> of the cards, and they'd just be like this big. Good luck shuffling those. Um, but they did not increase that. I don't think they did. It. I have not seen it, but they have increased the numbers by forty percent, um, which is not four times. Colossal. <laughs> wow. Colossal and they, cards. And they added the fifth player. Ten cards, so now you can play up to five players. You got white edged card backs, which must not have that in the original. I don't remember what the card backs look like, so hmm. a little bit different. Then you can get some plushies. Get some plushies. You get a get pretty small them. plushie, or else you can get the yeah, awesome. Yeah, plushie. we'll see. So fifteen, fifty-nine bucks, nearly sixty dollars for Cat in the Box. Which I don't remember what. Where is our Cat in the Box? Where is it? Right yeah, here. It, it fits in our drawer of small games. This is Cat in the Box. And now, <laughs> is it Ticket to Ride size? Box? I think it's Ticket to Ride size. Um, so this is what it is usually. Um, you can look at the card backs as well, see if they are white bordered. But um, yeah, I, I love the trays for all of the tokens. That they is, are not. I, that is. Oh my God! And look at you can barely read the numbers on the front there. I wish those were like forty percent larger. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the trays for the player tokens. Um, but it's just, it didn't have to be this big, this shouldn't be, I don't know what that cost. I don't remember. I, it doesn't feel, feel like, like it a, was like 20 to 30 bucks. It doesn't feel like a but... game that should be 60 bucks. Like, I feel like 30 bucks even, even though that yeah. has really nice components and it's a great game, 
30 bucks still feels like, ah, oh, that's like the mm -hmm. max you could charge for it. But they decided to go go big and people, people make buying it 60 it. bucks, which I would say it's the equivalent of that for the components you're getting here. It just, the game doesn't feel like it should be a big game. Mm -hmm. And you can add on 20 more bucks <laughs> to get that plushie, um, which looks like about the size of this box, or at least the one on the box. And Or mm -hmm. you can go even 20 bucks up from there. <laughs> And so forty dollars. Like the colossal cat plushie, uh, which is going to be massive, fifteen inches tall. It looks like, and his tail could even extend higher than that. Um, which I do like that cat. Um, it's it's an interesting cat. If I was getting this, I'd I'd, I'd get a cat probably a plushie. I don't <laughs> wow. know how big. I don't know how big of a plushie <laughs> oh I'd God. get. But if I was already in, it, <laughs> already in, why in, not go a little deep. further? <laughs> The fifty nine dollars. <laughs> Might as well just add on a. Forget the card dollars. sleeves. We're we're just we'll get a twenty five and a forty five plus. I like how they're showing how small <laughs> those card sleeves are in comparison to the cat. Wow. So this is. It, 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 I wouldn't have predicted it for of, this game. If I then a say, good chunk of chipping. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, like tw in the U S. It's twenty on top of. I mean, it's eighty dollars for the game. That. Yeah. I feel like you could probably somewhere get it for twenty, if not cheaper, mm, especially yeah. used. Twenty-five, maybe thirty. Yeah. That just uh, it seems like a lot. I don't I know. Mean, does it? It's a very. It's a like I said. It's a great game. It's a popular game, but does it need this? I don't July twenty twenty-four. I I don't. Do, are the expansions available or going to be available for the regular version? That's what I was wondering too. So I'm like I didn't new content. Either. I do want. I'm very interested in having those expansions, but I don't know. Um, these two expansions take advantage of the new oversized research board, yeah. which has more spaces than the original. So it looks like these will just be for that. For now, maybe they'll release something eventually. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's a little disappointing because I would like to maybe add on. I, they would probably, if they had those for the regular version. I could see myself adding those on, and then if I'm already there, I'd probably add on a plushie as well. <laughs> so they missed out by not having that. Yeah, they missed out. I, I don't know that. I mean, you'd have to take the insert out, so I don't no, know. No, the if... plushie would not fit in there, Zach. <laughs> no, the plushie would not. <laughs> I was gonna say if you got like a board that was longer. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if it fit in that unless you took the insert out. Mm. On to a Tycoon India 1981, the, the board, board game. game. <laughs> this one's got 376 backers, that about almost yeah, 23,500, and two weeks to go. Uh, this one, this one definitely has the feel of a, a Euro game, kind of an industrial. Yeah, feel. Tycoon, the name right there. That's very, very yeah. Euro. Yeah, it and it yeah, it looks that way too. Um, so it looks exactly based or it looks like what it's named. Yeah, I would say, I would say so. Um, but uh, yeah, th this one also I thought looked like it was one that's probably going to be playing better at probably the max player count because uh, there's kind of some different manipulation you're going to be bidding yeah. on certain things. You can see the people opening up their hands there, bidding on certain things to happen, and that'll yeah. help them. So. I, I think those types of games are just typically more interesting with yeah. more players. Yeah. And I, we just I, don't play that often. Yeah. Especially I, heavy Euros. Yeah, I would think so. Or mid I mean, to heavy. It's already, because I feel like there's a lot of games that give me the feel that this one does, and I'm not the biggest into these heavier Euros. Um, and even bidding, I'm not that much into. I like a few unique games that use bidding, but mm -hmm. um, using those things and as well, just maybe not the best at two players our usual player count probably an easy pass for me although i i like the components in the mm -hmm. game and the artwork I think the artwork um, the cards look especially looked really nice um i would agree and but, i thought the price was actually not too bad um, um for uh, i so mean you know, standard uh, edition mid to heavy euro 49 bucks isn't awful and you're yeah. getting it's not actually like the more you know the deluxe edition is looks like it's just actually adding on like poker chips so yeah. yep. i believe you get all of this right in that base edition which yeah. is all that really seems pretty nice 
Yeah, that is pretty nice. Um, but those are very nice as well. They are. Um, um, but I mean, like, when you are getting those, though, I mean, how much extra was it? Um, not so an Deluxe insane is, amount. It only brings it up to 75 That's only another 26 bucks, so it's not... It yeah, doesn't feel insane. Yeah. Um, whereas, like, some good. of these... I mean, I don't know exactly what these chips that's are true. like. I Once you actually have them in your hand and stuff, and you're clinking them together, more. you kind of will... You'll have a better idea of if they are they feel cheap or if they feel, yeah, yeah. like, you know, nice and Like the chunky. iron clays are really nice. Yes. Um, I forget exactly <laughs> what those cost in that version of the game or how much that yeah. bumped that one, but I'm sure Yeah, I think was... that made it... I think the deluxe version of that is like 70, 80 bucks. Oh, okay. At least when we got it. So I don't that's know if it's, about so. the same as this. So, I mean, so. it's... Yeah. Hopefully they'd be just as I would nice say quality. It, that's kind of in my mind what I would compare it to. Mm, yeah. Not saying that's yeah, what the does, gameplay, but it does it have made that me think feel of it. just with the industrial um, mm -hmm. nature there. Um, but yeah, I believe that's kind of the only two versions that you have there. So not like just crazy complex trying to figure out what you want either. No cat plushies, unfortunately. No, no. But dang it. Um, yeah, yes. I mean. I, this is this is, this is true crowdfunding. It says it here. <laughs> this it, might be what <clears throat> Kickstarter is all about. This project has been developed over the years by a solo indie game developer and publisher. The very definition of what crowdfunding was made for. That's the they pulled that quote right from you. Um, <laughs> yes. You've said it near about every week that we've done this. Every episode. You That's always true. had one project. That was that the one true. they were made for. Kickstarter was made for and. Um, this one actually, <laughs> I have to be honest, when I looked at this one, this one looks much, you know, some of those that I say that for feel less put together sometimes. Like, not, they don't yeah. feel like a big company put this together. Whereas, this that, one actually has that feel. Yeah, when <laughs> so I, unfortunately, yeah. it's making it feel like it's, I mean, not unfortunately, it yeah. feels like a big company yeah, put it this looks, cage together. It looks together. so nice. It's so unfortunate. <laughs> so unfortunate. They're making a nice looking game. I will agree that when I saw that cover, I'm like, that looks really nice. This looks like it's coming from a company that does Has these made games. made games. Yeah. A whole I bunch mean, of games in the past. So, yeah, props to them for yeah. not making <laughs> it seem indie. Um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, shipping so in India, that would be cheapest um usa that's gonna be another 20 to 30 bucks 20 yeah. 25 bucks so that's not which, bad march which, 2024 which seems a little aggressive but pretty aggressive um very aggressive but it's hopefully yes how many backers do they have again they have 377 i mean they're not it's not like they're printing a ton of copy <laughs> necessarily that they need to do but yeah. yeah, this one to me seems interesting, um, but yeah, I just, our current game group, I, I just don't know that it's for us, um, but this this would be one that, um, if it was on like Board Game Arena or something, I would oh, definitely, yeah. I would try it 100%, yeah, and yeah, then, sure. yeah, based on how that went, maybe then I'd have to be like, oh, shoot, I should have got a copy, Yeah, but yeah, it looks, looks good. And on to another good-looking game. I actually <laughs> had said, like, oh, this looks similar to Andrew Bosley artwork, which I think that's kind of the reason that it kind of gives it the feel of... Oh, being um, a little bit more... Yeah. Um, but that is actually not, so props to them. They look like the, one of the best artists in the business. Right. Um, and then this one, I didn't I didn't read this right here in the center there, but I was <laughs> like, this looks like Andrew Bosley, too. Jeez, all these people... Ripping off Andrew Bosley, and then it was Andrew Bosley. Yeah, potions of Azerland. It was, yeah, it was Andrew Bosley. Um, and, yeah, for someone, for some reason, to me, this one seems more indie. It does. It does. But it also seems, more. it seems like it's, I don't know what it is about some of the Andrew Bosley artwork, but it. it makes it feel like it's been done already. Yeah. Well, like he does so many of these, like, nature of this one feeling game has been done like like kind of the image here it's like a big tree um <laughs> and there's a little building there and i'm like this is everdell this is everdell <laughs> with people people who have animals they have a little sidekick animals versus just the animals mm -hmm. this has been done this is everdell potions of azerland <laughs> Yeah, so it's Oops. got fifty eight thousand, so yep. it's not doing too bad. Six hundred eighty backers two weeks ago, but 
I will say, when I first saw this one, I was like, yeah, I feel like I've seen this game a bunch. Yeah. And I, what does this one do that the others don't? But that I shouldn't be like that, judging a game by its cover necessarily. I do declare. I do. This gets your John brain declare. crunching from turn one. So I do like that John declare made a comment on it. Um, he doesn't comment often. <laughs> he doesn't make many comments, but when he does, you better be listening. <laughs> so, I mean, if he's saying it's a good one, I really like a lot of his games that he's done. So, um, yeah, I I would have no reason to believe he's just lying. So, I, <laughs> I'm i sure that this is a good game. It yeah. was just hard for me to, I think, get over the cover just looking like so many games these days. Yeah, it does. It just... Yeah, it and I like how I didn't say like... that about the Railroad Tycoon, even though there are <laughs> hundreds of t Railroad games yeah, yeah. that probably have a similar looking cover. That one just felt a little fresh. I don't know. It... Yeah. yeah maybe reason, we don't somehow... have as many of That's those. true. We don't have... Yeah, we don't have that many. Yeah. I, yeah. I know there are a lot of them, yeah, though. Yeah. So... Um, but yeah, base game is 50 bucks, which is another good price, because it looks that like is. a lot of nice tokens. They're cardboard mm -hmm. tokens, but like I said, Bosley, one of the best artists out there, so it's going to be amazing artwork throughout. Um, this board looks really, really nice. It's a weird shape, just like Everdale, same thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks really nice. Um, and then you can get the deluxe game for about 80 bucks, and these say wooden resource tokens, and it looks like these are screen printed or printed in some way mm -hmm. and it's pretty much the same artwork that is on the kind of other tokens in the game which that's the big thing when you do go to wooden tokens sometimes maybe it, you don't get any printing or mm -hmm. possibly mm -hmm. screen printing but it doesn't actually it's not as nice mm -hmm. um, but these ones look like they're going to look exactly like those other ones and mm -hmm. um, they look really really nice so that has me very tempted. If I did get this, that's a that's a big jump from forty nine to fifty to eighty. Yeah, thirty bucks. Which I don't know, but I'd be very tempted by that, especially for mm -hmm. the dual layered player boards as well. Yeah, but this one does feel like mentioned everything but the metal coins, which is usually the thing that gets mm -hmm. me. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I. I... I don't know. This looks interesting enough, but yeah, I this is one that I think I would I would personally probably just wait on. I don't know. It for some reason isn't speaking to me. I don't know why because I really yeah. do like Andrew Bosley's <laughs> artwork. Um, but I don't. But know. you could get yourself in the game, Zach. I could pay six hundred to get in the three game. Three left, three slots left for this. So yeah, as we're filming this, you, if you're going to try to get in this game, you better hurry over there. Of you and a furry friend. I mean, you and Cookie could be on here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Try. Yeah. I gotta change. She's gonna be so excited. She's gonna be so happy to be on there. Wow. Um, but yeah, this is looking for August 2024. Um, it looks like it has pretty nice things. I'm not sure mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing here. But that looks satisfying. Slotting things into th other things, into boards and. Game yeah, the resources. fact that it looks like cards yeah. and stuff, and John DeClaire is known it's to nice. have some interesting <clears throat> takes on card games, um, that has me a little bit more interested as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I hopefully I get to try this game at some point. I feel, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it just feels like so many other games, but could it be a special one? I think it could, mm -hmm. but it is just so hard to spot that from here. Right. Um, shipping is going to be 18 22 bucks for retail. It really, really seems like, as we've looked at a lot of these, that's right about the average. It seems yeah. like that's right where all these are landing, yeah. right in that range. Yeah. At least for the U.S. Yeah. And for this one, they got uh, World of Midgard, two entirely new Viking adventures. Um, it's got 32,000 it's making, which, not too bad. A lot of these seem to be kind of, yeah, in that range of, of you know, a few hundred backers, yeah. right around 500 backers, and yeah. 600. It's got two weeks to go yet. Um, 
I was definitely excited about this when I think I first saw some ad that there were going to be two new games yeah. in kind of the Midgard world. I was like, ooh, I really like Champion of Champions. Midgard. Amazing game. Amazing mm. game. So it anything is. in that universe always gets me excited. Whenever I hear Reavers of Midgard, I'm like, oh, another thing. I'm like, ah. I, re I don't know what it's like, but I remember looking at it once, and we obviously, I think we've both looked at it, and we didn't pull the trigger, even though we do love Champions, Champions of Midgard, so there must be something in that that doesn't feel for us. Maybe we'll have to go back and look at it and probably mm -hmm. get it. Um, <laughs> but then this immediately got me excited again. Um, then I kind of looked at him, I'm like, ah, that's not Champions of Midgard. Yeah, it didn't. Which, that's unfair to, mm -hmm. to make that comparison, because... You can't just... Although I'd probably buy just another version of Champions of Midgard, honestly, <laughs> but Maybe. Um, it's probably not fair to just look at it and be like, oh, that doesn't look as epic as Champions of Midgard. Right. They could be just as good games. Yeah, uh, it's it kind of some interesting... Um, two different interesting games. They both feel like smaller games yep. um, in yep. comparison. Uh, so the one is more of like a draft and write game. Uh, yep. Where you're getting these cards that have endless amounts of uh -huh. information mm -hmm. so on them these cards that here. do many different things. You had a, an amount in the le top left, the top right, the very bottom, a few different symbols in the middle here, and even more symbols That's in the middle Some letters, there. possibly. Some letters. Um, yeah. yeah, it can have a ton of different th things on it. And um, it's kind of, you've got this, uh, essentially this, I think it's a dry erase I assume it's a dry erase board that you're writing on. Um, uh, these boards? Maybe it's paper. Or these boards paper? here? Yeah. A pad of score sheets. So I okay, would think so maybe that, that. Or if you go to Deluxe, two pads of score okay. sheets. Okay, so I guess in my head I was thinking it would maybe be um, a marker one dry oh, erase, yeah. but I guess not. Yeah, I think they used a marker in the video, but it was onto a piece of paper. Oh, it must have been. Yeah. So uh, I, I thought it looked interesting, but I, I didn't know how... Um, how it would play oh, like long term yeah. if it feel different each uh, time yeah. or if it would feel really random like there's so many areas that you're scoring in yeah. it almost gets to be overwhelming of well what am i actually looking at this time is it going to be one that you're able to kind of score everything yeah every game i don't know i couldn't tell because what do you do you cross off the letters that you have there mm -hmm. if you complete rows and columns you get those points at the end of the game. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you compare your top left, the sum, so you draft your cards. Like, just regular drafting, you get, I don't know how many cards it was, a handful of like cards. like four or five yeah. or six or something. Um, so you compare that, and you, whoever has the most in the top left gets a god, which gives you... Some end game some scoring or end some scoring, scoring immediately or something. And then you total your glory, which I think looks like it's... I think it's just um, straight, straight points. up points, but then each round after that you have to get more. Um, so I like that. Score zero. I, I like that one quite a bit too. Um, and then you defeat monsters. And I think for every pair of matching monster symbols, uh, you score an amount of points based on what those are worth. So like these trolls, I think it's printed on the board, they'd be worth like two points. So you'd mm -hmm. slot that into your defeated monsters. And then you count the symbols of the different animals you have, which that determines... Uh, which area or something, oh. I think. Yeah, that's the which clan, clan you that support. you're doing, supporting. So I forget exactly how that works, but that determines yeah, I don't something. Exactly and then you assign that workers to the board according to your clan's territories. And then you cross off some ships. <laughs> and then you add Valkyries and resolve combat. And then you go to Valhalla, and then you for every two in Valhalla, <laughs> you end up getting points. Or if you win the combat, you get points that way. Mm -hmm. A lot of things to where if you're drafting these cards, there's so many things. <laughs> I'm like, I'd probably just choose like one or two things that I'm look really at looking round at. or something. And then just get what I get elsewhere. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed a bit much, but I, I like the look of the pads as well. Kind of yeah. just kind of worn type look to it um i don't know deluxe wise if i like the meeples obviously mm -hmm. um but a cloth game board i'm not sure depending on how thick that is mm -hmm. if that's gonna just like crumple right. up or if it's actually gonna be mm -hmm. usable um i, I assume it would be usable but you know, there have been crazier mistakes and errors. Yeah, that's just it. Sometimes you try to do things that just don't actually, aren't actually upgrades. 
Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that one will be or not, but yeah. hopefully. Um, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then the other game is a card game um, version or whatever of Reavers of Midgard, mm -hmm. um, which you can get standard or deluxe versions of that, which obviously really nice. Upgrading to metal coins, upgrading to custom shapes uh, for all these things. Mm -hmm. um, and that one, yeah, how did that go? Oh, yeah, you have all these. Yeah, so it's there's one card that's flipped over and it triggers certain things mm -hmm. to happen. Uh, each round it can be a little bit different. And then like you each play a card to go to a different location. And then you oh, have to yep. split the loot at that location. If you can't do it, then you all get like... Uh, Oh, okay. monster or something yeah. i don't remember what the name of it was but uh and then no one gets anything if you can't decide yeah. how to split this stuff um which i i think is interesting it reminds me of um what's the game that abby has uh, with the pigs uh fairy grim oh, grim forest grim forest um where there's three different resources you can go to and you each are putting a card face down as to which one you're going to, and then you reveal them, and then oh, you split yeah. all the resources there based mm -hmm. on how many people yeah. went there. Um, so you're sometimes trying to be the only one, so then you get all of yeah. it to yourself. That yeah. kind of is what the feel was for this as yeah. well. I, yeah, um, I feel like that could be better at more players, but then at the same thinking. time you don't want too many players, because then you're always probably going to be matching up. I don't know the player count on it. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I don't know if that would be best at two... Um, it may feel better because you're not going to be splitting it as often, but right. um, I think probably like three and four would be the sweet spot there. Just kind of trying to outthink a little bit and mm -hmm. um, every now and then being able to get all that loot. Right. Um, but yeah, I guess what were the even costs? Yeah, about ten, ten to twelve dollars shipping, mm -hmm. yeah. which is pretty good in comparison to the other ones we've looked at. Yeah. About half the price. So, Clans of Midgard, um, which Deluxe that edition. one is the flip and the yep. end right game or whatever. So that's about thirty bucks. And then Reavers the card game, which is thirty six bucks. Which that's actually quite a big difference. They didn't seem that different component wise. No. Hmm. Then together, fifty six bucks, bucks. Uh, which isn't bad. I don't think they have a regular version yeah. of it. It's just kind of showing you the comparison of deluxe and. Yeah, my guess is they'll sell it in yeah. retail afterwards. Um, so yeah, this might be one that you can wait and get if you don't really care about the upgrades and stuff. Um, I would say though, for both games, at fifty six plus twelve shipping, uh, so about. A little under 70, yeah. right around 70 bucks for both. I don't think that's awful. No, I, I think that's pretty good. They Both games seemed good. They had parts that intrigued me, and mm -hmm. I do like that line of games. Um, mm -hmm. And artwork and components, I think, are really nice, even mm -hmm. at those base levels. Um, but obviously these would be deluxe, and I think those are very nice components then. So I... I so like, as it is, I'm kind 30, of tempted. Uh, it's about thirty-five to bucks a game it. after yeah. shipping, so yeah. I mean, it's probably a little much for a uh, kind of a draft and write, mm, yeah. and then the you know a card game of Reavers didn't seem like it had that much for components wise, mm, like you said. Yeah. So I mean, they're both probably a little bit much, but I mean, whenever you go to Kickstarter, especially or oh, GameFound. Yeah. Um, it always seems like things are a little bit more expensive, and I feel like this is kind of less of a gap than a lot of things that you'd get on mm, here, yeah. I think. Yeah. feels yeah, like it to so. me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just blinded by my love of champions in Midgard. He's blinded totally by so. Midgard. Um, but yeah, I hope to get to try each of these. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly clans of Midgard. Maybe it's just the logo. I really like yeah. the blue there. That's, I think I'm more, really interested, nice. I'm more interested in the clans of Midgard yeah. as well. Hoplomachus, Pandora's Box, Expansions plus Base Game Reprints. This one's making 371,000. Almost 3,000 backers yeah. with two weeks to go. So, yeah, this is coming to, from, to you from Chip Theory Games, which always makes um, pretty high quality games. They use a lot of uh, chips, their own chips, mm -hmm. Chip Theory mm -hmm. Games, and they usually use um, neoprene mats as yep. well in their games. I think this is an expansion to a solo game, which I 
I feel like this is probably the chip theory game I've looked into the least, just because Havlamakis, mm, I believe, yeah. is completely solo, and I just I don't play that many games solo, and it, chip theory games also seem to be a little bit intimidating at times. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, that's really going to make it hard to table, just because you know if I'm the one grinding through it by myself, I just probably won't yeah. ever get that to yeah, the we table. Got too many bones. We played that a couple times, and it's been hard, even though. I think we both love those plays of them. It's been hard to get it back to the table. Um, mm -hmm. It's just intimidating. Yeah, and Cloud Spire we've looked into a little bit, and um, I've looked at that kind of a little more from a th solo perspective, and that one seemed very, very intimidating. Um, mm -hmm. So I have not looked at this one. I haven't known of this one oh. uh, nearly as much. Sorry, I, I did not I think, make you aware. I think I, yeah, I, I mean, this could have been in the collection, could have been my top ten games or something like that, but um, no, it's... They are big games and usually very complicated and a lot of things to remember. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can master them or master the rules, probably take a long time to actually master the game, but right. you can really get the rules down, I think they do have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And yeah, this looks like their typical quality. It looks like it's got some good artwork in it. And um, yeah, I. I'm sure this would be a good one, and yeah, it's just, I think it's just tough for me to look at chip theory games and not think that it's going to be intimidating, but yeah. otherwise, I think if you like chip theory games, this is probably right up your alley, especially if you also like playing games solo, that looks really good. And if you right want there. those boats with those chips in them, those are really nice, I'm like, ah, I want those a game with that. Cool. I want a game with that. Those Please. do look Chip cool. theory games, make another game with that. Oh my god, look at those. Look, I'm getting stacked in there. And they sail away. Then they crash. Oh, no, they're in the water dead. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's looking for October 2024, which is a big, big game. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of deluxe components. And it explains that. It's yeah, it looks like it's just the expansion away. here. It's about 100 bucks. Yep, yep. Uh, retail access um, gameplay bundle. So if you put it all together, it's about 200 I mean, uh, yep. it's kind of similar to a lot of their pricing. Their games are usually a lot more expensive, um, but they're also high quality. So, yeah, you, you kind of get what you pay for, but it's still, still go into it knowing it's it's a lot. It's a lot of money. Yep, yep. Probably should play too many bones at least a, a third time before we buy another. Chip Theory game, or, right. or Too Many Bones expansions, which we've right. been very tempted by. Um, and more chips. My gosh, all the chips in today's video. Um, I believe this is the last one we are looking at. We're to the end. Oof. The light at the end of the tunnel we is finally there. made it. Um, the Safarian. For some reason, I was thinking this is the biggest one, but I, I totally had forgotten how much Terraforming Mars was making. Yes, my uh, goodness. So it's just, it's crushing, this game. Not even yeah. close. Yeah, it's crushing. This um, is... Completely but. failed at <laughs> yes. $527,000 uh, with two weeks left. Yes, and already 4,000 4, backers. 000. Yeah. The Isofurian Guard, second printing. So I feel like this is, maybe I'm totally misremembering this, but I feel like I see this cover all the time. So I don't know if I'm, I get like a ton of ads on it or oh, something, yeah. but I just feel like I've seen that cover a ton but have known nothing about the game itself, <laughs> or whether it's any good. That is possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do feel like I've seen that as well, but it could be other games possibly with a similar cover. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is one to two players, which... Which isn't too typical no, of games. No, for um, kind of a campaign game. Um, I guess Destiny is one to three. Destiny that's true. That, three. that was interesting. That that was one to three. Um, mm. It's even more interesting than one to two because it's like oh, two player game, whatever. But three as the cutoff is. After we played, and then it, the I'm weird like, thing okay, too was I've played it twice: once at two and once at three. And it actually felt like it went a lot quicker, a lot more oh, smooth yeah. with two than it did with three. Hmm. So I'm like, it maybe could have just been one to two oh, yeah. <laughs> as well. But yeah. then I think. I don't know. Does that make it less of a selling point if it's one to three versus one to two? I don't know. It might. It might. I guess we'll have to compare numbers with Destinies um, with the, what this is doing. So, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, story-driven game designed for one to two players. Alex Radcliffe loves it. Absolutely loves it. 
At Loves least. the Foreteller app. And At least on a decent set of speakers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you're going to need to invest into speakers, which they do not have as an add-on here. Unfortunately. For, for the narration and You'd background think they would. music. But. Um, but yeah, this one looked really nice. I love the artwork of mm -hmm. this one. Like A lot of the times, there'll be like, oh, that's great artwork on the cover, or maybe the characters are really good, but maybe the monsters aren't great, or the board isn't great. Mm -hmm. um, but I think everything here, I think maybe the cover, I haven't looked at it closely, but that might probably my least mm -hmm. favorite part. I think for some reason, every time I look I, at that cover, too, I think Game of Thrones. I don't know uh, why. Yeah. It, it's got that feel. It's got that feel. Um yeah, it's, it's got the chips. It's got the chips. It's got the chips. It's got the chips. Oh, and it's got an amazing video. Um, <laughs> at the top of this, I should have pulled it up. Maybe I'll play a GIF of it. I don't know. Probably not. But with these cubes, you know, basic, translucent, pandemic-like cubes, you're like, oh, that's not that interesting. But in the promo video at the top of this page... <laughs> They had a clip where those were all being thrown onto the board and bouncing in slow motion, and it was maybe the it was probably the best moment of any <laughs> Kickstarter video that I've ever seen. It was amazing. It was beautiful. It's pretty good. Um, so good shot. Whoever made that video, that was amazing. A lot of other great shots as well. Just probably the best Kickstarter video cinematic that I'd seen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but that's yeah, a pretty good shot. Building the bag, um, which I love bag building, especially with really nice chips, poker chips in there, and kind of using those to activate your different people throughout the game, and baddies, battling baddies, and the baddies might throw bad chips into your bag. Mm -hmm. um, you get to choose your path as you move along and to these different spots, unlocking these cards, choosing an answer. Um, it looked really nice. And maybe it was just a great video um, to start it <laughs> off, but just immediately I was so interested in this where this is just kind of the order we looked at them. Um, yeah. And this is the last one. I'm like, oh, just another one of those games. But um, this one started to win me over. Yeah, I, I would agree. That that got me a lot more interested because at first I'm like, oh, you just got kind of some pandemic cubes. It's just another one of those huge games. Um but yeah, as as we we're going through it, I was like, "Yeah, this actually yeah. doesn't look it's really cool looking, like tech look too bad. tree type thing as well, which mm -hmm. looks cool." Um, <clears throat> got apparently the most immersive um, game according to <laughs> Alex and Board Game Co., <laughs> uh, which I've had. I think the first scenario on Jaws of the Lion had the foreteller for free or something mm -hmm. like that, and it was pretty good. So my one experience with them was good. So. They have background to music and soundtrack and voicing to an entire campaign. I'm interested in that. We haven't had that really, so right. <clears throat> I guess Forgotten Waters, that kind of thing, is probably the closest that we have. Yeah, that's um, true. So that I'm has interested in, in more of that. Yeah, I would agree. And it sounded like, because uh, he kind of talked a little bit about what the... So this is the second printing of it, and it sounds like that there will be... Um, they're kind of filling in some of the <laughs> gaps they had previously uh -oh. had in some of that, so hopefully more and more quests. will be yeah. right. More and more of the side quests and stuff will be filled in by um, Foreteller. Um, so, yeah, I, uh... and an easy save. So you upgrade your boards, put different buildings out, which mm -hmm. I think they're dual layered. They'll slot right in there. Hopefully not too tight, unless they stay there forever. Then I guess it can be tight and whatever. But you <laughs> right. save it. You just put them in this tray. Put the lid on there. Oh, that just seems... Hopefully that works. Um, yeah, I hope that's actually that quick of a that setup really and nice. teardown. Although it says setup and teardown only takes 10 minutes, and this does not look like it takes 10 minutes, so there's something there hiding from us here. <laughs> um, but yeah. Right. I'm, I shouldn't have looked at this one. I shouldn't have looked at this one. It might It might take some money. It might take some money. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately another. it's another huge game. Yeah, it's. I think it's like a Gloomhaven, Frosthaven size box, so it's a big, big box. Um, oh, and look at all yeah, those. Yeah, you got a lot of, lot of stuff and there. Slide which is intimidating. In there. It is intimidating. Yeah. Um, it's fun to think at the time, <laughs> unfortunately, and then you get it, and it's like, oh, that, do I want to take that out? But it does. It does look good. 
Yeah, yeah. So it'll be 180 bucks for just the full game pledge. Mm -hmm. If you want the narration, that's going to bump up another 20 bucks to 200. Um, so I would say, I think for sure, if we did get this, we're already paying yeah. 180. I'm probably paying 20 more for the foreteller. Yeah, um, I would think so. Pretty, yeah. pretty easily. And then, while the net, the neoprene mat looked really nice, rolling out onto the table in the video, amazing <laughs> video. I over this huge long mm -hmm, table. Mm -hmm. Another forty bucks. That, yeah. God, but I really love the look of that map. Yeah, yeah, probably, I, I guess that probably I depends would, if it goes in the box. It probably doesn't. Um, let's see. It doesn't look. Maybe that it. That's not <clears> it. This. Yeah. No, I think... No, those are the chips. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it probably does not, but you can... I'm sure it can just sit completely right on top of the box. That's the box true. That big. is a big box. That's um, fair. Yeah, it's... Pro probably would hold back from that, because 40 more bucks is quite a bit. And um, we don't, we don't uh, usually get neoprene mats, so... Yeah, yeah, and then you could bump it up, even from there, to 275 which you can get a purple bag, um, which... It is for uh, who knows what. Who knows what. <laughs> it's um, for something. I think there's some a few different colored bags, but if yeah, you got these bags. But if you want a purple bag, you can get a purple bag if you want it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you can get some special foil cards or things like that. I'm just going for June 2024, which is you know it's sooner than some of the others, and this is yeah probably equally ambitious as a pretty any of game. the others. Um, right. But yeah, so, it's it's expensive though. It definitely yeah. is, but it looks like you get a lot of content. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, uh, most most. Uh, I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe a little bit more expensive than some of the ones we've seen that are kind of like this, kind of this sort of yeah. ambition. Yeah, yeah, I would say kind it of is stuff. Maybe a little more... bit more, but not not crazy amount more. I would say. Yeah, I feel like this doesn't have as much doesn't like, have like add on, add on stuff. potential type stuff as right. those do. Um, so those have a higher ceiling as mm -hmm. to what they can go to. Um, but this one, yeah, it does seem like it starts out a little higher. And like you said, there aren't really that many minis mm -hmm. um, in the game. So where are they putting all? Where is this money going? I think it, it must be the. I'm assuming it's all into the story and yeah. stuff. So yeah. yep. Um, so yeah, that. But it is, it's like right at that line. If it started out at like 240, and it'd be like, ah, probably not going to get it. But just, be, it's, it's just right, right at that line where I'm, I'm tempted. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was 13 projects. That was um, a lot. For a combined backing amount of God knows what. <laughs> if you got it all, uh, that's going to be a tough day. Tough day. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, if you're still with us at this point, uh, Definitely give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down because we you know, like made you spend all your money. It was money. way too long and you didn't even cover the project I was interested in. <laughs> right. There's even more projects out there, which is the crazy yeah. thing. And we could talk for 40 more minutes about 10 more games. Right. Um, but, yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we appreciate you watching this long. Uh, but otherwise, we hope to see you on our next videos. And as always, don't forget to keep on nibbling on our content.